destino vivir así triste agonía vivir sin ti me siento perdida en este mundo y mi último fracaso será tu jamás volver a estar cerca de mí que no te importa mi manera de vivir ni te interesa más por mí sé que aunque yo muera tú jamás podrás saber lo que sentí en mi agonía de vivir lejos de ti Llorando estoy um, I'll be straight an exhibition on that Santiago. I'll just piece it with the impact of Spain, Santiago's homeland, of course, on the work that he produced in Paris. This was a moment to explore the impact of Spain's rich art and costume history, its varied regional dress traditions, the vestments of the Catholic Church, Spain's dance traditions, and the costume of the bullfight on Valenciaga's work. The more research I did, the more resonances I discovered, uh, as I think we'll see. The remarkable and striking thing about Cristobal Valenciaga's design trajectory is that by the time he arrived in Paris in 1937, he was in many ways fully formed as a designer. But his work from, then, from that moment on was a relentless pursuit of perfection and innovation, and he ultimately produced some of the most thoughtful and even provocative designs in the twilight of his career. Both Martina and Aguirre and became a, a jogging seamstress to support her family, um, which at that point included uh, Cristobal, his sister Maria Agustina, and his younger brother Juan Martin. A much beloved figure in the village, Doña Martina also helped in community tasks, mending fishing nets, and even helping as a midwife. Valenciaga was devoted to her. He would preserve his mother's sewing machine as an almost religious relic, displaying it in the farmhouse at Monte Gueldo overlooking um, the whole niche of San Sebastian. There were two things um, that struck me about my visit to this village. Um, the first was the uh, dramatic scale of the church of San Salvador that you can see here, uh, with the tower rising high above the surrounding village houses, um, visible, I think, from sailors returning from long trips to sea. And um, the second is that um, the top of the little hill, um, the, the, the village of Guitar is sort of the, the fishing village nestled at the bottom of the hill. And at the top of the hill is this um, path still there, and in fact it's now the um, it's now the Valenciaga Museum that Hubert de Gimonchi created. Um, pretty, as you see, a, 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 a mid-19th century uh, red brick villa. It's actually latticed in sort of rather odd blue grey glazed tile. This was the summer home of the Marcos of Casa Torres. One of Dona Martina's clients was the Marquesa de Casa Torres, seen here. Uh, Hubert de Givenchy described to me the Viscontian scene of Valenciaga related to him, of the Marquesa and her family arriving every year for the season to stay in the summer house and descending from their carriages and automobiles with their clothes covered in a film of dust. Valenciaga hung around his mother's apron tails as she helped the Marquesa unpack her splendid Parisian gowns from the great dressmakers of the day, including Doucet, Fécol, Redfer and Worth as her miraculously and filled their testament. Related. <laughs> that would have been his first lesson in making clothes for people who knew. <laughs> that lesson learned that Antioch was more <coughs> engaged by his mother's world than by the prospect of following his uncle, his village priest, into the church. 
or indeed his father into a life at sea. There's a story that Bonantyre related to three great star chroniclers, his two perfect clients according to Rothschild, uh, some of his pieces were happy to have in exhibition, both fashion editor Bettina Ballard and Cecil Beaton. But when he was about 10 or 11 years old, he saw the Marquesa de Cavatores en route to mass, dressing up in the height of Peruvian sheep. <coughs> Perhaps emboldened by his acquaintance through, uh, with her through his mother, and certainly dazzled by her Christian experience, um, this photograph bears testament to, he told her how elegant she looked. What's the little boy know of elegance, she said to have responded. <laughs> And he said he knew about clothes and brave, and he said that he could copy the suit she was wearing. <laughs> she duly gave him the fabric to do so. Um, she thought she think he might have been helped a little bit by his mother. <laughs> um, and was apparently impressed enough with the results to wear the suit uh, to mass the following week. The